All right, I thought I'd make a video on showing you guys this. Um, I'm actually pretty amazed on this Harbor Freight Predator generator. Um, I, I've got, I've had the Honda EU 2000. I have a Ryobi, and it still works. My hot Ryobi still works. My Honda, actually, I'll tell you about the Honda real quick, and then we'll get into this thing. I had the EU 2000. Uh, I had it for about four years and the valve got stuck in the head on it and it was really 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 hard to take that thing apart there was just a ton of you had to take everything apart on it just to get to it it took me like half a day just to change to take the head or to unstick the valve I think the I don't know I don't remember exactly the procedure it's been a while about five six years ago and that happened and then after I was done with that and it ran for a while, a couple of years went by and the whole thing almost caught fire. All of a sudden it just started smoking. It was the wires inside of it started smoking because they go through little ports and stuff like that. It's really hard to work on and it really made me very disappointed in the Honda. Even though I really love Honda engines, I was really disappointed in the EU2000 generator as far as serviceability. And I had my Ryobi, Ryobi, I took it apart, had to change the fuel lines. It was a, it was a bit difficult, difficult to do, um, but it was doable. And same thing with this one, doing the cord on it if I needed to. Uh, it could be done, it's gonna be a little tough to do, but they actually made this thing knowing that you're gonna have to service it. And they made it so it comes apart fairly easy. So what I'm gonna show you really quick is how <laughs> they made this thing to be serviceable if you notice this case is in halves the honda i think it was all one half seam and you had to take the whole thing apart this one here is made in several pieces so you have this half goes comes on and off here um it has screws that go into here you can pull the whole front face of this thing off. The whole front face can come off. So you can have access to the front. Um, so you could literally, I could take out this screw and this screw. And I'd be able to pull the whole, and I think a couple down here. Um, and I could be able to pull this whole face out. So I could get to the uh, pull cord stuff inside there. Um, or if I wanted to take off that side, I could take off that side to get access to in there and this thing, and then it still has, it's still mounted on the mounts that are on the body, which are on the bottom. So they made this thing to work on. Now, what a couple of things that you're going to do if you have a generator is one of the things you're going to do is you're going to leave old gas in it. Um, and that happened, I think on this one. Uh, I don't think it was really that old, but I had to take the carburetor off. And, you know, on the other two generators I have, getting the carburetor off was not, on the Honda, it's like, oh God, not easy, okay? On this one, it's doable. They actually made it so that, so if you can raise up the gas tank, I can't really do it when I'm, doing this video, but I, I just kind of lift up the gas tank, kind of pry it up just a little bit because it's rubber mounted and then uh, move the engine. If you can see, it kind of has rubber mounts to it too and kind of push it over. I can put this car take this carburetor here on and off without taking the entire thing apart. And believe me, I if I recall correctly, the Honda, you have to take the entire thing apart just to get to the carburetor. Well. Are you going to leave old gas in yours once? Yes, you will. That's just going to happen. So it seems like um, Harbor Freight um, knew that that was going to happen. And they were like, oh, let's uh, make this a little bit easier. So it looks a little bit harder to work on when you, when you have it. Uh, because you're going, there's no little access panel for the spark plug and all that. But really, all there is... On this thing is one, two, three screws, and then this whole side panel comes off, and you've got access in here 
to your spark plug. You can actually reach it. There's a spark plug right there in the top. But if you didn't want to fight and get your hand up in there or any of that stuff, all you have to do is take off all these screws around here. There's like a couple down here. And this whole side panel can come off. And when the side panel's off, then you have access to your carburetor and you can just slide the carburetor off. You just take the two screws off to the air cleaner nozzle, this thing here, and then that is what holds the carburetor on there. So it, they made this thing to work on. They made it so that if you're going to break down, you can fix it, you know, and it's not terribly hard to where it would take you days, weeks, or hours to do. It's just, you know, something that you could fix if you were handy and had the know-how to do that you could actually fix this thing so i really I, I mean not only is this a good generator i've run this i've had this thing longer than i had my honda and people go oh it's you know it's not can't be better than a honda it's like well it lasted longer it's done i've used it more and i've done the same jobs i have and i've had to take it apart and fix the carburetor which is doable and the honda it's like well good thing i never uh left old gas in it i don't think i did but if i did i don't think i'd be able to fix it this thing you can actually get in here and work on you know you see you take this away and you have all the space now i think I don't know exactly how this gas tank comes out, but I think with a little bit of wiggling and I think it's just kind of dropped in with gravity being held in here. If I just wiggle this thing up, I could probably take that whole gas tank out and then I'd have tons of room to work on this thing. So it really, you know, it was designed to work on it was designed that way. Obviously, they didn't just shove this thing in a box and try to make it, you know, they made it specifically for someone to be able to work on it, which I appreciate. I constantly see cars, everything that I see is not made to work on. So you have to get done with it, you throw it in the trash and go buy another one. This one's made to work on. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, I'll show you in a few minutes some more stuff. So another thing I noticed is, remember I mentioned about how hard it is to get to the spark plug without having to take this corner off. They actually made, if you didn't notice on yours, that there is a little access hole right here that gives you access to your spark plug. I mean, if you're a little creative, I think you would still need this side panel off. But if you just wanted to use your long extension, they made it so that you could actually work on it. Which, to me, that's pretty cool. So basically the two or three things, actually three things I would hope that you're going to have to do is one, you're going to at some point probably change your spark plug. Number two, you're going to have to change the oil. Uh, number three, at some point you'll probably uh, be, well there's four things actually, you're probably going to have to have access to your float bowl and the best way to do that is with the carburetor out. Like I said, all you do is take the side panel off, kind of push up on the gas tank, maybe even shove something underneath it, and then wiggle the engine over by kind of prying on the rubber mounts a little bit, and you can actually get it out of this hole. It's a little tight, but it can be done, and I think they had figured that out when they built this. The other thing that you're probably gonna have to do at some point is change the pull cord. So they made this thing so that it didn't just work for, you know, two or three years or whatever, and then you throw it in the trash and go buy another piece of junk. Um, they made it to work good and last. So, you know, that's not your normal old Harbor Freight. Uh, the newer stuff they're making now is actually better than some of the old. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention this stuff in a video for you. Well, on top of that, I was able to actually start it up without having to put it all together, which is nice. So that way I could make sure that I didn't forget something. And it does seem to be running better. It was actually running kind of lean and kind of shaky and poppy. So I think that resolved the issue. 
and it and it only did that when it was cold after it warmed up I mean, it would take a long time to warm up because it was running kind of lean you know when they're cold it needs to be richer right that's why they have a choke so i think i resolved that problem that i had and i'll be able to continue to use this thing for another four or five years who knows look at it does it look like i take really good care of it no i'm a contractor i use this thing this thing sits in my truck with a lock on it and sometimes i you know i bought it cheap enough they were not expensive to buy compared to the competition i believe a honda back there somebody would break my lock in 10 minutes but this old predator works better than my honda did my honda would not run this is my makita compressor wouldn't run it it's only rated at the same amount but it does put out more juice than what they rated at it says like 13 Point three max I've run stuff 15 amps on this thing and it's been just fine the other thing that I really didn't like about my Honda is when I overloaded it you'd have to shut the engine off and then re pull start it on this all I do is it just stays running is disconnect my cord and push this button and it resets it so I don't have to keep pull starting it again and again. Because yes, I do overload it. I do use it. I run it to its maximum a lot. And this Predator takes it. The Honda didn't. Well, I'm going to be nice to this thing and change its oil since it was good to me. But I thought I'd go over a couple of the farsities that I've heard people say uh, about Honda and... Harbor Freight or even the Ryobi which I still have one of my guys was out uh, out of town and he couldn't get the Ryobi started uh, basically because it was Josh you know, sloshing around in the truck and the it was flooded and he just didn't know to pull it enough so he stopped at a Harbor Freight and just bought this which now I'm kind of glad that he did because it's actually a really good generator. So a couple things that I hear people say are the Honda is quieter than the Ryobi. Um, I had the Honda for several years and when I switched to this one or the Ryobi or it's quieter than the, the Honda is quieter than the Harbor Freight the Predator um, no I didn't notice any difference between the Harbor Freight and the Honda at all they were basically the same the other thing I hear is people tell me the Honda starts easier than the Harbor Freight um, I will tell you my my Ryobi is a little harder to start than this one is uh, this one starts exactly the same as my Honda you pull it basically once maybe twice at the most three times and it starts right up even though it looks like this it starts right up now I was having a little bit of trouble when the carburetor was plugged up but not that much still it still started with the choke on right away the only things I found different on this is it's easier to work on, much easier to work on. It doesn't have, I don't have to turn the engine off to reset the thing, which that's a huge benefit. Um, it, the idle thing works the same as the Honda. I don't see any difference there at all. Um, the only thing I found with this is so far it has lasted longer than my Honda did. It was a half the price of the Honda and did the same thing. Now, I don't know if somebody abuses theirs worse than me. I would be surprised if they do, but maybe they just like do really bad stuff to it. Like, I don't know, cross wires or start taking it apart and fiddling with stuff and not putting it back together correctly. But 
I've had really no issues with this generator and I've had it several years now and it still runs uh, some things that have happened to all of my generators is they've fallen off the truck um, and this one still runs after that um, this just happens on job sites or whatever I had one generator a long time ago that was on a cart and we're pushing the cart and the carts brakes uh, didn't hold and it went and rolled down a hill and started right back up so I'm pretty positive on this generator I would have to say that I would recommend it as a buy um, over some of the competitors um, and if you're on the fence if you're just thinking you were looking at the Honda and you're looking at one of these and you're going wow this is a lot cheaper honestly I would not buy the Honda you know as much as I do like Hondas I'm a Honda fan I've had Honda motorcycles all my life I have Honda mower uh, I really love Honda stuff but their generator in my opinion was a big fail for me and maybe that's because it looked like this and maybe that's because I abused it but I just tell you I abused this generator just the same as I did my Honda and it doesn't care so to me there's an old saying it takes a licking and keeps on ticking what would you rather have I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this one.